Hello everybody, welcome back to the Edible Schoolyard Kern County. My name's Ben and I'm excited because today we get to slow down, stop and smell the roses. Uh, because today's video is gonna focus on flower anatomy, on what a pollinator is and what happens inside this flower for pollination to occur. So I'm excited and let's go ahead and get started into it. Anatomy means the structure or makeup of something. So when we're talking about flower anatomy, we're gonna look at all the different structures that make up our flowers. Uh, first thing you should know is that flowers have male parts and female parts. The female part, you can see I wrote here, is called the pistil. The stamen is the male part. There are many male parts in a flower and only one pistil. Uh, we'll talk more about these once we get to our actual dissection. All right, guys, I have chosen a beautiful California poppy to dissect. And already, when I'm looking in there, I can see a whole bunch of little antenna that I think are the stamen, and I can see what looks like one bigger antenna coming out of the middle, which I believe is the pistol. So let's dissect it open and see if I'm right. Uh, you don't really need any tools. Flowers, of course, are pretty delicate. So I'm just gonna use my fingernail and slice it open a little bit. And by doing that, I can see that this major stem right here is the pistil. That's the female part of the flower that we talked about. And I can see all these stamen surrounding it. And if you remember, that's where the pollen is collected at the top there. And in a later video, we're gonna talk all about how pollinators like bees get pollen, that's over here, onto the top part of the pistil. And so I challenge you guys, in your garden, go and do this yourself. You can see I didn't need any tools and it was very easy to open it up and look. And now that you know what to look for, I bet you are gonna be successful. All right, let's move on from talking about flower anatomy onto an animal who loves our flowers even more than we do. And that type of animal is called a pollinator. Uh, when I say the word pollinator, a, a bee might spring to your mind, but there's actually a lot of different types of pollinators that you wouldn't expect. Things like butterflies, hummingbirds, some types of flies, some types of bats, and even moths and ants. So all of these animals perform this special task of pollination. And what I mean by that is pollination is when pollen, as the name suggests, is when pollen from the male part of the flower gets moved to the female part of the flower. When that happens, we say that pollination has occurred. Uh, we're gonna talk about why that is so important and we're going to take a dive and we're going to talk about a specific type of pollinator uh, so let's go in get a little closer and let's see if we can find that special type of pollinator and see it in action let's go for it so check it out i managed to interrupt a honeybee that was in the act of pollinating and you could tell that because if you check out the back of her legs are covered in pollen that's what that orange those orange balls are and so she is covered in pollen, and the reason she was there is that she was looking for nectar, which is a sap that flowers produce. And bees can take that back to their hive, and they can turn it into honey that they can use for food. So we just let our honeybee go because she was in the middle of something important. So we let her get back to it. And like we said, she was in that flower digging down for sweet, sweet nectar that she wants to turn to honey but while that was happening, uh, something accidentally was happening as well, and that's pollination. Because as that honeybee is digging around inside that flower, her hairy body is getting covered in pollen. And as she exits that flower, pollen is gonna move from the stamen, like we talked about in the flower anatomy, over to the pistil. When that occurs, that's pollination right there. That's the magic. And what is she gonna do next? She's gonna go find another flower and is gonna move pollen from the stamen on that flower to the pistil on that same flower. And she's gonna do that again and again. And in fact, uh, some honeybee hives are capable of pollinating over three million flowers every single day, which is nuts. That is so many flowers. And we're gonna talk about right now why that is so good and so, so, so important for us. So today we've been looking at the anatomy of a flower. We've been talking about what a pollinator is and what pollination is. And we've even gotten a close up view of a honeybee. But the absolute coolest, most mind blowing part, we haven't even touched on. And it's what happens after pollination has happened. And 
It is so important. Like I said, without pollination, our lives would be so different and much sadder because how many of you guys enjoy eating food? I know I do. And without pollination, you're not gonna be able to get much food at all. Uh, in fact, uh, it's estimated, it's a guess that about 80% of the plants that are flowering and make fruit all depend on animals to pollinate them. Um, in fact, right behind me, I have a really lovely peach tree. And if you can see these peaches, they're in the middle of growing, they'll be ready soon. But not too long ago, these were just flowers. And a bee came along or a butterfly or a moth came along and pollinated it. And once that occurs, it starts growing a fruit. So if something doesn't get pollinated, if a flower goes unpollinated, it's not gonna grow into a fruit. So if we didn't have a lot of bees in this garden, this would still be a flower that was getting ready to fall off. But luckily, we've got our peaches here and they'll be ready soon. And so I challenge you guys that, uh, make sure somewhere in your yard or on a balcony, try to have some flowers growing. It attracts bees into your area and it helps either grow food or just make it a lot prettier in your area and it gives you flowers to look at. So let's talk a little more and I wanna show you guys some really cool facts about pollinators and really about honeybees in particular, just because I think they're so interesting. Um, let's go check them out. So as we finish up this video and we already talked about pretty much everything surrounding pollination, I wanted to turn your attention over to here to some facts about pollination that I thought were so cool and were so fun to learn about and I wanted to share with you. Uh, let's start over here at the top. Uh, and I wrote down up here, apples, carrots, avocados, and blueberries. Um, if you enjoy those fruits at all, maybe they're your favorite fruit, then you should know that without animals pollinating, going from flower to flower, these would not exist. So that just really hammers home how important pollination is for us. Uh, down here, I wrote that all worker honeybees are female. And if you were listening closely in today's video, you'll notice that every time I was talking about a honeybee, I always called that honeybee a her. Like, look at what she's doing, look at her. And that's because every single honeybee that leaves the hive to go search for food in the form of nectar is female. All the male bees stay back and do different jobs at the hive. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, and it's crazy that there are so many bees in each hive and we see so many bees, but they're all female. Uh, next, I wrote and asked you guys a question. Is pollination important in making chocolate? That's a very important question because uh, I know that uh, everybody enjoys chocolate 100%. And in fact, without animals pollinating, there would be no chocolate, which sounds like a horrible life to live. And in fact, it's not a bee that pollinates what's called the cacao flower where we get chocolate from. It's this tiny, tiny, tiny little fly called a midge. And it has to be that tiny because the cacao flower is really intricate and hard to get into. So only a very tiny pollinator can get in. Next, I wrote, how hard do honeybees work? Because I'm sure you guys have heard the phrase like busy as bees. And that phrase is so true and it's a great one to use because honeybees never sleep. I know you guys all out there should be getting about eight hours of sleep a day. Honeybees don't need any and they can still be so productive and make so much food and do so much pollination. So a big round of applause to our hardworking honeybees out there. And I think this one is so cool. At the bottom, how many queens are in each hive? Not all bees make hives, but Honeybees definitely do, and I'm sure you guys have seen hives of some sort at some time in your lives. And in fact, there is one queen in each hive, and that one queen is responsible for laying about 2,000 eggs every single day and making sure that there are plenty of bees to do all the jobs, because the hive is a pretty busy place with a lot going on. So there needs to be a lot of bees doing all their different tasks. And so, hey, I had one join me right there. and so. I think these are amazing facts. Um, quiz your parents on them. You can ask them. I'm sure they don't know some of these. And I really hope this hammers home just how important pollinators are in terms of making sure that we have food to eat and that we have plenty of flowers to enjoy. 
Okay, guys, uh, that wraps up today's video. Uh, I really want to thank you guys for joining me. This was a really fun video to make because I got to hang out around flowers and look for pollinators. And so thank you guys. Uh, again, I do want to challenge you guys to go out there and find some examples of pollinators in your garden, on your street, wherever their flowers are, I guarantee there's pollinators. But I will say, in our garden, we teach each other how to have good behavior. And by that, we mean how to act around bees. And that includes not swatting at them, not yelling at them. And in fact, the best idea, if a bee flies up to you, just freeze, be a statue is what we say. And the bee is gonna pretty quickly figure out that you're not a flower and it's gonna leave you alone. So please be safe, but have fun going out there. And from the Edible Schoolyard, Kern County, I'm Ben, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you a ton for joining me.